Hey guys, you just watched a video about power and introducing power, but I want to go over a couple of things which uh, really are, pertain to AP and are useful to know. Um, the first one is this concept of a kilowatt hour. You may recognize that term. Uh, so we're going to explain what a kilowatt hour is um, and what it means to us, both in terms of physics and in terms of the world that we live in. Uh, and then I'm going to finish up with a classic physics problem called a ballistic pendulum. Now, the ballistic pendulum problem, some of you saw it in class on Tuesday. So that the second part of this video today is mainly for the people who weren't here on Tuesday. Um, the ballistic pendulum problem will not show up on the AP exam. It's just not the style of problem that they ask anymore because it has too many steps in it, which you'll see. But it is a classic physics problem, a classic physics application that was practically useful for a long, long time, decades and decades, maybe, well, yeah, certainly decades. Um, and uh, you definitely will see this problem in college because it's just a classic application. So I'm going to walk you through the ballistic pendulum problem. It's the second part of this. Okay, so a kilowatt hour, you have seen this term before. This is the term that uh, shows up on your electric bill. This is the way that they bill us, make us pay for the electricity that we use in our house. Um, and you know enough about power now so we can figure out what this means. So kilowatt that you probably recognize stands for 1000 watts. So what this means is you use a thousand watts of power, electrical power in your house for one hour and they will charge you money for that electricity that you use during that time. So let's figure out what this actually boils down to and what this means. Because this looks like a unit of power, but it's really not. Okay, so let's do the math here. So a kilowatt hour, means 1,000 watts times one hour. Not too surprising. That's what I just said. So let's translate that. So that is 1,000 joules per second times one hour. Now, joules per second, so we have a unit of time in the numerator and in the denominator. So let's see if we can make this stuff cancel out. So we're going to multiply this by... 3,600 seconds per hour, because you probably recognize, remember that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, so 3,600. So the seconds cancel out, the hours cancel out, and it leaves us just with joules. So it turns out that a kilowatt hour, <coughs> excuse me, a kilowatt hour is actually a unit of energy. It's a pretty big chunk of energy. It comes out to be 3 million 600,000 joules. That's a kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour, that's the way it's often uh, often portrayed, okay? So uh, 3,600,000 joules. Um, now, I just looked it up on the internet, so it must be true, but a kilowatt hour right now, on average, in the United States costs 13.3 cents. So if you run your 1,000-watt hair dryer for an hour, the electricity that you use costs 13.3 cents on average in the U.S. Um, if you run your 1,000-watt uh, microwave oven for an hour, 13.3 cents. Um, if you have 10 100-watt light bulbs lighting up your house, um, and you run all those 100-watt light bulbs, 10 of them for an hour, 13.3 cents, that's how much the electricity costs. Um, now, some people say that that's uh, artificially low because that doesn't include the environmental costs of burning the fossil fuels and everything, but that's a discussion for another day. But that's amazingly cheap. Now, to put into perspective just how cheap this is, let's imagine that you are uh, going to uh, empty your backyard swimming pool. OK, and you want to um, you want to save electricity. You don't wanna have to pay all that money. Um, so you're going to do it with a bucket. And you're going to start lifting out buckets of water and pouring them out, uh, pouring out, pouring them out of your swimming pool. So let's assume that we're going to lift, uh, um, lift the water uh, two meters, which is basically six feet. Okay. Now we can figure out how much work you're going to have to do to lift that, uh, lift that much water, um, to lift water two meters. Um, now, it turns out that uh, one liter of water has a mass of one kilogram. Uh, this is one of the really useful things about the metric system is it makes it easy to convert between one unit and another. Um, 
I'll tell you that story another time if you're interested, but let's just stick to the topic right now. So one, uh, one kilogram of water is one liter. Um, and if we lift, and that one kilogram, uh, let's just use round numbers here, 10, uh, 10 for G. Um, that means it's 10 newtons, 10 newtons of force. And we are going to uh, 10 newtons of weight. That's the weight of one kilogram approximately. And we're going to lift that two meters. So that means it's 20 joules, okay? 20 joules of energy to lift one liter of water two meters. Um, per liter lifted two meters. Okay, so 3.6 million joules, 20 joules per liter. How many liters of water can we lift out of the pool? I can't do this one in my head. 36. Thousand three point six million. We're going to divide that by twenty joules, so that means one hundred and eighty thousand liters. Okay, one hundred and eighty thousand liters we can pump out of our pool, lifting each one of them two meters. Okay, well, how much is that? You're going to have to take my word for it on this, but you can back me up on the math if you want. One liter is a cube of water, which is ten centimeters by ten centimeters by ten centimeters. Okay, so ten, a box 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters deep. That cube of water is one liter. It happens to have a mass of one kilogram. Uh, and if you do work this out, this turns out to be about 30 feet by 30 feet by six feet deep. So this is a pretty good size backyard swimming pool. Um, now think about how much time it would take you and how much your neighbor would have to pay you to empty their swimming pool with a bucket, their entire swimming pool with a bucket. And the alternative to paying you is to borrow a pump or buy a pump and spend 13 cents worth of electricity to pump out the entire swimming pool. Okay, so the reason I point this out is two things. One, so that you know what this term means and you can figure it out how many joules it is and then you know start doing problems that way. Uh, but the other reason what this has to do with our world is that energy is incredibly cheap. And in our industrial age, um, with electricity and the machines that we have and electric motors and electric pumps and things like that, we can do an incredible amount of work for basically no money. That's what runs our civilization. Our civilization runs on cheap energy. There's 13 cents to empty an entire swimming pool. Uh, where you'd have to hire a team of people and pay them hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars to do this by hand, by buckets. So this is why we have the things we have. This is why we have the buildings we have and the roads and the cars and the bridges and everything that we have, dams, you name it. Uh, it's because it is so cheap for us to do work. We have machines that do it for us. Okay, that's kilowatt hour.